Hello everyone, welcome back to the combat series and in this video we are going to be making mobile support. So in order to make mobile support, we're going to be using something that's called context action service. You bind a user input to a contextual action. Okay, let me go to the local script, combat input. Okay, so let's create a variable for context action service. This is going to replace user input service as user input service is only for PC. Okay. Now let's create two functions for blocking and for punching. So let's create a function punch. Local function block. Local function set context action service. Okay. Now in punch, let's just copy this combat remote fire server. And here we'll just fire this and in set context action service. So the main thing is for context action service is context action service bind action, context action service unbind action, and context action service set title. This are the main three you're going to be using. So set title is to set the title of the button. For bind action, you bind a new action, okay? The first parameter is action name. So you print the action name, which is going to be punch, and the function to bind, punch, create touch button. Yes, we're going to be creating a button for mobile. And the input, which is enum dot user input type dot mouse button one. There we go. And set title. We're going to be setting the action punch to a title punch. Because we're not going to be using images for now. Maybe you could use images. If you could if you want to use images, you could. I'll show you how later. Now let's do the same for blocking. Block. Block. And Key code F. So there's two parameters that are being sent when you use context action service and you press an input. The first parameter is the name of the action and the second parameter is the state, the input state. So let me print the state and you'll see how to unblock when you let go of the button. So let me go to test, go to mobile, and start playing. I forgot to call the context action service function. So set context action service. Now you want to make the block unblock when you let go of the button, right? So let's see how this works when you block user when you un when you block enum dot user input state begin when you unblock dot end so you can check if the input state is ended by doing this if state equals equals enum dot user input state dot begin we're going to be firing true if it's ended then we're going to be firing false now we have no need for this Okay, now let's say you want to adjust the size, the position, and the image if you want to use an image. So here, you need to get the button, okay? Um, let's go to player GUI, and there is context action GUI. Here, these are the two buttons that we made, block and punch. If you want to adjust the position and image, you can test test out the position right here um, change the size to 1 1 or something like that move it around and once you find the right amount of values you can copy it and then you paste it okay so I've already found out my preferred values for the size and position let me get it real quick here are the position for the punch this is the position for the block 
this is the size for both of the buttons okay now we can get the button by doing context action surface get button and you put in the action name in this case we want to put in punch and there we go it returns the button so we can just do local punch button equals this and then we can do punch button dot size plus you do um equals this this is the vector tool for GUIs punch button dot position you I will copy this and paste this and I'll do the same for blocking block block button block button block button so essentially we make a function that creates buttons for two inputs for two functions blocking and punching we create the action we set the name and we set the size we get the button we change the size and we change the position there we go you can also adjust other properties as well if you want to like here you can change you can change the image ID you can change the image color you can change all types of stuff okay I forgot to change the button position let me paste it right here there we go so I want the punch button to disappear when I equip my tool right because punching doesn't work when you equip a tool because as you can see because it's disabled because so because punch is disabled when we equip a tool it makes sense to disable these buttons as you can see it works now before we equip a tool locking works we hold it we let go it works punching works but when we equip button doesn't punch doesn't work so to make this user friendly to make this non confusing for players we disable the button for punching when we equip a tool so to do that we can do something like this character child added and a function this event runs whenever a new child is added to the player to the character i mean sorry and when you equip a tool, the tool is cloned and parented into the character. So we can check if the child is a tool. If child is a tool, then we unbind this button. Unbind action, punch. Now let's do the same thing, but if the weapon has been removed, connect function. Let's say the player unequipped the sword if child is a tool then we call the set contacts action service function again let's see if this works let me move towards the dummy uh, okay works when we equip a sword we just tap we tap our screen and when we unequip the sword the punch button is back Okay, nice. This is it for this video. This is a pretty simple and short video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.